We live in a very monotonous environment that we take for granted. The same causes lead to the same results in the same environment. How boring, isn't it? While thinking this way, I realized that I was a prisoner of learning to condition. This is what science actually did. They explore the universe and become aware of the facts on this scientific journey. Let's take the human body as an example. The scientist is like an explorer trying to discover the structure and operating system of the human body. If we take the human body as an example, like a spacecraft, the scientist is exploring a spacecraft and admires the communication system. He tries to uncover the design used in this communication system, but he does not ask the questions he really needs to ask and think about. Who produced the vehicle I was in? Where did this vehicle come from? What does the owner of this vehicle want from us? And where does this vehicle go? While thinking about all this, I decided to research my surroundings with an extraordinary approach and with what science contributed to me. I wanted to see behind the scenes what was happening around me by going one step further. Let me share one anecdote. Recently, we went for a walk in the forest with my friends. I reached out to pluck a wonderful wildflower in the bushes and a thorn scratched my finger. Blood began to flow slowly from the scratch to the ground. After a while, a small bubble formed and the flow of the blood stopped. I started to think about what if the blood hadn't stopped? My blood, which is like living water of my body, would be in danger of running out. This miracle of coagulation that I started to realize stimulated the urge to investigate. It could be seen as a very simple process. A hole was made when the thorn pierced under my skin, and after a while, the tear that started to bleed was closing by itself. In reality though, it wasn't a simple process at all. Let me try to explain this with a few examples that come to mind. Let's consider a ship floating in the water. How difficult would it be to fix a hole that punctured this ship? There's high pressure water outside of the ship and low pressure air inside the ship. And the water begins to fill the ship due to the pressure differences. Likewise, it's challenging to fix a hole in a dam wall. With the effects of gravity and pressure differences, water tries to gush out the hole. It could also blow up the dam by breaking on the walls around it. It's easier to fix when the dam is empty. It's much more challenging to fix when the dam is full of water. Neither iron nor cement can easily stand there. Well, how can bleeding from the veins that carry our blood flowing throughout our lives be stopped so quickly? It is said that some of the veins in our body can tour the world twice. A person may die after a while if the bleeding is not stopped caused by the pressure in our veins. Since we do not have modern machines, extraordinary bricks, and ultra adhesives in our blood to repair damages to the veins, what stops the bleeding using what materials? Could the hole in a ship or dam be closed by chance or by themselves? What about in the human vein? Doesn't it require a serious will, plan, and efforts to repair the holes? Let me try to tell you about the vein repair story that science has detected down to the finest details. Clotting begins in the blood as soon as vascular injury occurs. There are certain processes and molecules necessary for coagulation to occur. The blood platelets in our blood and circulatory system are actually not individual cells. Their particles are detached from massive cells. These particles have vital importance. They measure between 250 and 350,000 per cubic milliliter. If these particles did not exist, the blood in our body would flow without stopping which starts to come out with a small cut or injury, and in the end, we would die due to blood loss. To not die from blood loss, the wound that occurs in our body is blocked by a perfect cell wall in a short time, and our blood coagulates and loses its fluidity. If the coagulation happened inside the veins instead of outside, it would cause nutritional deficiencies that lead to organ blockages and death. The limitation of the coagulation is as important as stopping the bleeding. If there are no molecules called prostestaclin in our blood, clots would occur quickly and these clots would block the veins in our body and the organs that do not get blood to them would face gangrene. The pieces of clots that could break off would cause a blockage in the vessels leading to vital organs such as the brain, heart, and lungs. There is another clot dissolving system in our blood to avoid damaging our bodies. In the process of coagulation, which is lined up like a row of dominoes, each factor has been chosen and placed in its proper place with endless knowledge and wisdom. If the order is broken down or missing, the coagulation process would be interrupted and the chain would be broken. Therefore, it cannot be said that coagulation process occurs spontaneously by the chance of mutations or chaotic chemical mixtures. Dear friends, we know that scientists have discovered the blood process of coagulation 
in detail with technological development. We continue with the awareness of the journey inspired by the inventions exploring this process. Hope to see you on many more scientific journeys.